Now we've had a little pause, <clears throat> taking a break. It's a new day, and uh, the last time we were videoing, we cut in this this molding here on the bottom. I cut the straight line and then chiseling into it, and then we we gouged out the groove. Now, if you notice, I've left this the flat on this groove here a little wider than I than I really want it. And I'll come back to that once I put the toe plate on. Once I inlet the toe plate, whatever depth that toe plate is, then I will bring the edge of the, the, the groove right up to the edge of the toe plate and then taper it down slowly to nothing on the other side. Now, once this side is done, I like to do alternate sides, one after the other, so that it's fresh in my mind and I can see uh, clearly what I've, I've already done. Now I've already started this side as you can see and I did the same thing. I <clears throat> I cut the, the straight line with the with the straight edge and now uh, I've got to finish doing the groove. You can see I've, I've had a little bit of that groove already. So even though the 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 groove gets wider up here I still like to stay with a gouge that is is small and if you if you have a good sharp gouge as you can see that you can push this along with your hand and it's a good idea to have a have a liner and I've done this so many times I I don't really need the line but it's a good idea to have a pencil line on there so you don't go go too far and if you're uncomfortable pushing pushing the gouge, then you can you can use your mallet on it. Now when I did the other side <clears throat> Lily was doing the videoing and rather than watch you watch boring of how slow I do this, she sped up the video. It looks like I'm going like that, but this is this is a this is about my normal pace. I wish I could go that fast. All right, we've got the the lower molding finished to match the other side here now, and now we're going to have to draw in where the molding for around the tang and where the side plate is. Now, you might think that I'm getting a little ahead of myself by, by, by putting in a carving. I don't consider this a carving. I consider this as a molding. When I get down in here, it will be part of a carving, but we can't really shape the wrist until we know where that carving is going to go. So I don't want to turn this into a carving class. So I will skip over some of that part, but anyway, We've got our, our moldings here for the side panels that come up here. Now you can actually you can actually extend these these by and come way up way up in here with this and and come around in here if if you want. That's all a matter of of what you would like to do. But on this rifle we're gonna we're gonna keep this fairly fairly plain and simple. So. Uh, if we put a, a line right across these points here, so we'll know get one get both sides to line up with each other. You can see where I I just rough that one out on that side. I'm way off my eye. So if you get one of these orange art gum erasers in the, any art store, and then we'll bring that right up to to that line so that they will be the same on both sides. Now you don't want to get <clears throat> get too worried about whether you're drawing this circle exactly the same as this side because when we cut those out we're going to plunge cut those with a chisel and the chisel is smarter than you are. This chisel is going to make an exact same copy on both sides. Now there's again there's a couple of ways we can do this. If you want to keep it really simple, you can just bring this molding down here like this and bring it down around 
around there. Then we will plunge cut this here and we will drop all this. But I, I like to put in some, some sort of a carving here or at least a molding so you can go a little bit further and, and extend this down. But we're going to need a center line on here. Now before we do that, here I go with my lines again. These lines are so helpful. I'm going to put a center line on the wrist. Now this has this stock has a quarter inch cast off to the right. So <clears throat> anytime you're doing this, you've got to realize that that cast off is there. So sometimes you have to accommodate from one side a little more than the other. But in the wrist here, this is pretty straight right from that tang screw right to the center of the wrist. So we'll just put that that line on there. Didn't quite make it. A little more that way. There. And then you can you can just take and freehand. Now I'm using this curve in here to kind of go along with the molding. Now you can and this is this is all very very personal. There's no no law that says what you have to do here. Now I'm just doing this very, very lightly to see how it's going to look. And that would be, that would look fairly decent there, but it's, it's not uh, a perfect mirror Im image from side to side. So what I can do is I can use some of my, my patterns that I've made for, for the lobes and all that I have a, a good, a good circle on there. And that one is pretty close. So I can lay that down there like that and I can give myself a nice dark line and you're not locked into any of this stuff until you actually do the cut. Then we can take and I think that's the one we're going to go with at least for now. I may change my mind, change my mind a lot. Sometimes, even when I'm carving, I sometimes I'll design, I'll change the design in the middle of the carving area, and uh, a lot of it has to do with the, the <clears throat> with the gouges and the chisels that you're using, because once you get get doing a, a curve with a gouge, it makes a perfect curve. The next perfect curve, you get, you match it up with one of your gouges. And then you might want to go outside your line. Let it go. Let it go outside the line. As long as it's going to come back in and join the the line that you originally intended. Then when you do the other side, it's going to make a, a perfect, perfect copy. Now here, uh, <clears throat> down at the, the end of the comb, we're going to have another molding to end the comb here. Now you don't have to have it. You can you can bring this back just straight if you want. But we want to make this rifle just a little bit better than the the average straight run of the mill. So we're going to put another another molding on here. And we'll it's going to be very simple. Just bring it around here and you can see how I'm I'm drawing this. I'm just kind of daubing it as I go. I'm, I'm not making a perfect circle and I'm not too worried about that. And then where where your the the groove in, in the, at the top of your comb here is, you can use that. You can see the curve that's here at the top of your groove that's coming down that really all sweeps down into the front of your, your cheek piece. So you're going to use the same curve and, and go in here. And we'll just bring that down here somewhat. Now later, you can take the time and do something. Uh, even even just a molding like that would be all right, but I think that looks a little plain. What I would do here is we'll put another another little overlapping leaf in here like this.
Simple as that. Down here we'll do something, something similar. I'm not going to take the time to to draw anything out. It could it could just end in a in a circle like that, or or it could. Uh, there's a number of things you could do with it, but for now we're only going to be worried about this up in here right now. <clears throat> we might we might put something. Another just just to take a little bit of the plainness, we'll put a a leaf in here like this. It's just just as simple as that. And again, you can see that I, I'm not I'm not taking too much time to draw this because this is all going to be stamped in with your gouge, and your gouge is going to do a better job at drawing this than you are. Now when we get get over to this side, we want to do something in here that is going to to not be the same, but have the same idea as bringing your your comb down into something, giving it a beginning, a beginning and an end. So we will try to copy this side here and bring this around a little bit of the carving. And we're going to go over the top and do something on the other side that will coincide with, with this side. And it doesn't have to be the same, but uh, we want something that will blend with the other side so it will all look like part of the, of the same design. And... Uh, Right, right now, we have to think. When when you're when you're shaping a rifle, you have to think way ahead. Even when you're working up on this end, you've you've got to think about down here. And what you've done here is the rifle is shaped from the butt plate down to what is going to be the wrist. So you just cut everything straight right down to the level of of the wrist. So we're going to put the patch box door in here. As I mentioned before, there's a flat on here that you've got to keep flat so your, your patch box door will stay so there'll be no crack around the edge of it. And when you finish rounding these edges up, you don't want to go over that line. So we'll take this, we'll take this uh, butt plate off now. Now would be a good time to look and see how, how that black line is on the butt there. It'll give us an idea just how tight we've made that butt plate. I think we've done pretty good on it, but we're not quite done with it yet. And you want to use the same screw for the top of your, as you do the bottom of the butt plate. So put them in a, where they where they won't uh, come apart. Now look at the butt plate. Now you can see where the butt plate was on there. We had our blackening on the bottom edge and up tight. So you can see it's touching all the way around. There's just a couple of little places that is just just a slight crack. And I'm talking about a hairline crack, but we're going to fix that a, a little bit later. And I'll, and I'll show you how we'll do that. But for now, we're going to slide this patch box in. And this is cut, um, so this drill will slide up and butt right against there. There we are. Now, if you notice how nice and tight it is all the way around there. Now, if we didn't have this flat, and I'll put this light down here so you can see the flat. If we didn't have that flat on there, we'll be trying to fit it on a radius. And then you'd be seeing this crack under it. So that flat, we have to keep that that there. So I'm going to draw a pencil line around that. And now, when we're when we're uh, rasping and sanding, we will rasp all the way up to the line. You can see the the, the point on here right now. 
this is got a curve all the way up to the line, and this has got a curve. See, there's a, another point on it right along here. So we're going to to bring this curve up in a nice even curve right up and stop at that line. We don't want to go over the line. You can see that the corner right here even better. So that's all going to slope right up to the edge. Now, if you don't like the patch box as long as this, you can cut it back. There's no, there's no uh, particular number you have to go by. Uh, and if you do cut it back, then just draw your new line back here and round all this up. So if, if you leave the flat on it, that'll show from, from across the room. Every time there's, there's a little light goes across your stock, you'll see there's a flat spot on it. And, that, and that's terrible. You don't, don't ever want to see that. Now, on this stock here, you can see the stripe. You see this, whoops. You can see the stripe in the stock. It's a little hard to see because it's a little dirty and all. But there's a very, very strong stripe here. And the stripe is going across this way. Now, when you, when you pick out a, a patch box door, if you can get a piece from the same panel, the same wood, that, that's excellent. So what you want is when the slide, when the door slides in, the stripe on the door is the same angle as this. And sometimes you'll see them with the stripe on the, on the door is cocked this way. And again, you'll see that from across the room. Now there's no way you can match the, the, the stripe. Actually, I saw one that was almost perfect, but I don't get paranoid about that. I try to get them, the lines at least going in the same direction. Now, when you're fitting a door, if you get a piece of wood that the stripe is tipped on it, you may, you may have to use a much, a much bigger piece of wood. You can see the stripe on this piece of wood. Now, if I lay it right on the comb, these line up nicely. But if the stripe on the stock itself was going this way, then you would have to turn your wood this way to get it lined up. So you'll be cutting your door across your piece of wood at that angle in order to get your stripe straight. But there's nothing worse than, than seeing a rifle with the stripe on the stock going this way and the one on the door going the other way. It's very, very noticeable. But again, you're not going to get it perfect, but we try to get it uh, as close as, as we can. Now, at this point, I'm going to, here I am with my lines again. I'm going to go, again, from the point of the, of the lock plate to the center of the To the center of the patch box and I know this is a lot of controversy but where does the patch box go should it go should it go higher on the stock should it go lower on the stock myself I think it looks better if you center it not on the whole butt plate but center it from the bottom of your molding to the to the stop to the top of the stock so I mark the center of the of where I'm going to cut the patch box opening and go from the point of the of the plate that center get a line right down the middle then I center the the molding for the the lock plate lobe and the the shape of the of the uh, patch box and then we're going to use this line and we want to we want to continue with our design around this side. Now there's all kinds that you can just use your imagination, look through books, whatever, you can copy somebody. I like to just freehand them and I just really want to buy myself doing this. I'll doodle, I'll draw it, I'll erase it. And this one's going to be very simple. So we're just going to, just going to bring this around here and so that it, it, uh, It coincides with this side. And again, 
I'm not going to be too concerned over drawing it on there because when I do, when I make this cut, I'm going to use a gouge that will will have this shape. And if I have a, don't have a gouge that matches that pencil line exactly, what I'll do is get one that will maybe leave the line and then come back onto the line down here. That's fine. Then I can just use the same gouge on this side and and go around this side, and now I'll. Now I've got a perfect image, even though I didn't draw it perfectly with with, with my pencil. Pencil is only a guide to, to go by. So we'll bring this down here and maybe put a little, just to give it a little bit more character, just a little bit of a lobe here. And I like to, to bring this up and bring it around in this shape here. Now... I don't like to see this come straight back. You don't want any straight lines on your drawing. You want you want a nice curve. And eventually, what we'll do here, just to take this away, and again, I'm getting back into carving, we'll bring this around here like that. And that will probably be an incise line. We'll cut this down in here. And then, that's why we, we drew our patch box on here, so that we wouldn't get our drawing down too close to this. You, you want to look at, again, you want to look at the whole thing. What looks in proportion uh, here? So we get this down, and you want to bring it down and around in here. Now, you, you could go way up this far. You, you could end it down here. But I'm going to bring it up, and I'm looking at this, op this opening here, and I'm thinking I'm going to, Get pretty close to matching that just because it looks right and that's kind of telling me how far I'm going to go up there with that with that line and again this is going to be done with your gouges so I'm not too concerned over making an exact and this will probably end up with an incise line around here like that or you might put a little little bit of a tail on there I can't I can't stop I can't stop designing carvings. <clears throat> so now we, now our job is going to be to plunge cut all these lines in here and down here. Now the reason I went so far with, with the design and the drawing is I'm going to cut all these lines before I start taking any background off. So that when I start, when I start lowering the background in here, I'll bring it all the way back to here. And the same thing up in here. This will be all brought down down in here. And you might think, wow, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be quite a job. Uh, but it is much easier than you think, providing you have the right tools and they're super, super sharp. We've got we've got our drawing on here now for the moldings, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna cut those in so we can bring the wrist down to the right to the right size and shape uh, and these drawings i mentioned we may change them as we go to for one reason or another. sometimes when you're doing it it just looks something comes in your mind and and uh, say that'd be better and i change it now since i was doing this i was thinking that i said that we don't want to turn this into a carving class but I think this area here we can do something very very simple here to 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 make this uh, just a little nicer looking in through here so I mentioned before you could just you could just put a a little radius right around that and we do that because we don't want to carve right up to the metal. We want to leave enough wood in here so that it's not going to chip out. So we can still do that. And keep in mind this lobe here that we're doing. But we can make this into a, a little bit of a carving by just making some leaves. Just like this and bring them right down, right to the edge of the line. Now, we're not going to, we're not going to, 
cut this back right down to to this line now we're gonna we're gonna make the plunge cut on the end of these leaves so I'm just going to to freehand this just to give us a rough idea because again when we when we stamp this when we stamp this leaf in here we'll just bring the same gouge on this side and do it so you see I'm not really I'm not really too worried about if if I'm drawing because I'm going to let the, the gouge do it and then we'll we will not will not uh, will not plunge this line in here I'm just taking it off so we'll see what it looks like And there, so there's a little, but this is a perfect example. You can even, you can even do one there, which I think would look good. See, when you're looking at this stuff, <laughs> I, I can't stop. I get carried away because I love, I love to do the, the carving. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to carve anymore because of my, my macular degeneration when I, but I'm going to try one after I get this project done. I'm going to try and see if I can do a nice carving. But anyway, that's what we've got here now. So we're going to start to plunge cut that in. Now, these tools here, these are my carving tools. And I keep this off the bench because it's in my way here when I'm not, when I'm not carving. But I ha have all these gouges, and I have them lined up with all the radiuses getting larger as they go. And then on on this side of the of the bench, I have all these little palm chisels, and these all have have different radiuses on them. So that's a that's a fairly big one, and I use these mostly for a stamping in when I don't have a. a a gouge that'll match one of one of my cuts, and also for lowering the background by pushing with them. So you, you can see that they and some of them I grind with a with a bull nose on them, and then some of them are square. And even though the radius is the same, there's different different jobs that the one with the bull nose will will do better. But uh, <clears throat> right now, I've got to pick a gouge that will match up. We're going to start right here. That will match up with this with this uh, radius right there. So I, I do pretty good looking up through here and picking one. And if I pick the wrong one, if it's if it's too tight a radius, usually the next one or the one just before it will work. Let's see how I did this time. Perfect. That's going to work perfectly. And then when I do that, I can go over and just double check and make sure it's... Yeah, it's going to work on both sides very nicely. Now i got to get my mallet. Well-worn mallet. One of these days, though myself to build a new one but there's something about not letting go I like old stuff all right now I'm putting that right on that line that goes across it's not necessarily on the drawing but it's up touching the line and and I'm gonna just just swing that a little like that and it, Now that's all the tapping it needs. Now you don't want to be afraid to go too deep within reason. If you go deeper than you really need to, it really is not going to show. So there we've made the very first cut. Now 
we want to continue that cut on down <clears throat> we'll follow that cut down and around so we're just going to bring that down as far as this this first leaf so I think I'll we'll stamp the end of the leaf first and then connect onto it so I'm going to say we're going to go right about there a little too small I got my second granddaughter here with me today video so I have plenty of help somebody will help all I have to do is call out Yeah, that one's good. Now, I'm going to go right over to the other side so I know that this is going to be a mirror image. Now this this leaf here that I've drawn is a little smaller radius but I think a little larger would be good and so the gouge here is telling me Go ahead and use the same one. So there it is. And now I'll go over to the other side. Sometime like this you say well that's pretty close I'll use the same thing for the other side because it's very close and then you look and you say well no it's close but it's not perfect and that's when the devil steps in like right here the devil steps in and says go ahead and use it it's close enough and I hate that little guy he sits on your shoulder but I'm not listening to him so we'll go for a little tighter radius on that one. Look at that one. That's a little too, a little too tight. I'm just doing the very end of that. Once we get by the this design, this will move a lot faster than you would think. Now, we've, we got through stamping in, in this little design here, and we've made the curves there. And then uh, my granddaughter Gabby decided to get me a, go down to Dunkin' Donuts to get me a cup of coffee. And while she was gone, the devil got on my shoulder, and he said, You're not going to leave that that plane, are you, David? And I said, I guess not, and I gave in to the devil. So I figured it would be a good match for there. So I stamped that in while she was gone. So that's where that came from, in case you're wondering. All right, now we're going to continue this line from here all the way around the lobe and all the way up to here. Now, there's a number of ways you can do that. Some, some build it 
builders like to use a vayner. Uh, I don't like vayners myself. I I would rather I would rather stamp it in. The reason I like to stamp it is when you when you <clears throat> when you use a gouge, of course one side is flat and the other side has that bevel. So when you drive it into the wood, the bevel pushes the gouge over. If you were doing that curve right there, you drive it in, it pushes it into the into the design and it it hardens the edge. It compresses the wood up against the edge so that when you're removing the background, it's got a nice hard solid stopping point where you are and then after the background is down it's a nice clean surface to work up against that's why i like it now the other the other thing to do on this it, you can make most of these cuts with a gouge and some of them i do i like to do on the on the radiuses i like to use the gouge but on the long straight runs like like this would be I like to use this exacto knife and uh, again it's just very very important to have it sharp very very sharp everything that you use including your sandpaper it's got to be very very sharp and again I I can turn this stock right here to get it exactly where I want it now it will appear that I'm pulling this knife I wouldn't recommend that because you know what happens you slip out of the crack and there you go right across you and there's no eraser on this so the way I do it is I push it with my thumb and I'm going to try to do this without getting it in the way of the camera and still being able to do it so here we go you might be better on this side, Gabby, over, over on this side. Okay. You want it all right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you see what I'm doing? I'm pushing it with this thumb. I'm not, I'm not pulling it. I'm pushing it. And the long, flat edge on it makes it very easy to steer it. Now it's that the curve, so I want it down this way. And of course you want your cut to be a right angle with the surface. So of course if you were cutting up here, you'd be that angle. As you go around the curve, you've got to lean over and try to get as much of a right angle to your drawing as possible because you don't want to undercut your your molding. Oops. Now that radius right there that I just went around would be very easy to do with a gouge, but this is going quite nicely. Now we go over it the second time. Again, notice how often I'm using, moving that light. Is that light in your way, Gabby? Nope. Well, I'm going very carefully over that line one more time. Now these panels are only when they're finished, they're only a sixteenth of an inch difference in the level and I'm cutting a little more than a sixteenth because we take a little off the top after we're done. So I want to turn that just a little bit. Maybe a little more.
It's a lot easier to plunge with the chisel than it is to run this knife. Hands get cramped up when I do too much of this. All right, now we're down to where we're starting to get into the radius. So now we'll now we'll go back. And find some chisel that are going to work here. Yeah. Chosen. This gouge here, this is one of those uh, beaver tail gouges. I don't know what it is about these, but uh, they have a different feel to them. I love using these. They just, it's like picking up a long rifle, a nice slim long rifle. They just feel good in your hands. And this radius, I'm going to put right in here. Now, that isn't matching up 100% to that line. The other thing, too, is when you plunge cut like this, you want to keep the inside pretty much plumb. You don't want to get it, you don't want to get it bent over this way for obvious reasons or the other way. You want to get it fairly plumb. And once, that's about as far as I can go with that. Now, what we want to do is to plunge both sides because we want that lobe to be exactly the same. So we're going to immediately flip it over and do that one plunge right there. Now you can see that that isn't exactly on that line either. That's all it takes. Now we'll go back to this side. Now we're going to have to get another gouge with a flatter radius. Let's see if this one works. Oh, a little more radius. Now I'm connecting on to the line there that that we did with the knife. Keep that going right on there. Doing this, you're gonna make sure you get a nice clean. I guess I'm just sliding it around. And make sure you get a nice nice clean junction when you touch down. <clears throat> so that'll be that nice clean sweep. If you've got one side flat on this, it would be terrible. You'd see it from a long ways off. I didn't quite get that knife cut far enough, so I'm going to skip away from it and continue that. Staying out of your way, Gabby? Yep, you're good. <clears throat> now, when I put the gouge in here, I'm, you can see that I'm quite a ways off that line, but I'm looking ahead up here so that when this comes around, it's going to meet with this line rather than trying to match the pencil line.
the gouge will do a better job than you will. You see now that's coming right onto the line. You see the difference? There's the line inside there. But we've got a perfect, perfect radius there. And now I'm going to have to go back and just finish that straight line, which was right there. Not straight, but attach it to our other knife cut. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got that all the way around there. And both sides are done there. Now <clears throat> we want to continue on and finish this line from here around over to here. And we've got that line back on this straight, so we can see that uh, that we've got it even on both sides. So now we'll go over there and get that. Now we've got the the plunge cut to here, so we want to go around. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to use this. This nice beaver tail. That's as far as I can go with that. Now, let me see if this works. That looks good. Right on the line. And just let it slide right around on that crack. You see that's leaving the pencil line just barely. But that's okay. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Twenty-five years ago, <clears throat> I took a carving course with Wallace Gussler, and he told us that the eventually our drawings would match all the gouges that we had, even though we didn't have all the radiuses. And I didn't believe him at the time, but he he's exactly right. It's very rare that I draw. A a curve of, at all that I don't have a, of course I have a lot of gouges, but nevertheless it just seems as though I draw the same circles all the time. All right, now we're going to cut this in here. And I'm going to use one of those little palm chisels, and I keep these super sharp. And I'm going to match that up. That's not quite big enough. No, it won't be. Yeah. 
Good. Now while I've got this gouge in my hand, I'll do this one. This will save me a little time when we get to that one. Okay. How do you know how deep to carve it? Well, you just kind of go by the feel if you're if you're listening with your ears, you you can hear hear it, but if you're just starting out doing this, I would recommend trying it on a See that well enough. I would recommend trying it on a scrap piece of wood and then cut in it to see just how deep you're going. And then I'm going to bring that tail. How deep are these cuts? I would say. They're about uh, maybe three thirty seconds, and some will get a little bit deeper. Now I think we've got all the radiuses done, so I can go back to my exacto <clears throat> knife here. And this is another thing when, if you get in the habit of putting your tools back in the same place every time <clears throat> when you need it you don't have to go looking for it when I'm working with with the machines and stuff I'm, I'm terrible I I don't put the taps and dies and the drills back in the indexes and I get to a point where I can't find anything I stop put everything away and start all over again but I do better with my with my carving tools. Well, it's five minutes past four. That's my quitting time. There's a glass of whiskey waiting for me next to my fireplace in the house. But I'll finish sanding the background here. And uh, not, not to finish sanding yet, just to take all the humps and bumps off and scrape the, uh, the wood here around the lock is still high higher than the lock plate so at some point I'll take the lock plate out and lower this back so it gets right to the the beveled edge but uh, this is a good time to to be looking at this with the sun coming in the in the window just casts a shadow right across it so we've got our molding all the way from the bottom all the way up we've got our wrist all shaped nice and round. We've got our little, our little design uh, around the tang, which adds a little bit to it. Even the one that's that's on the uh, on the top. And then as we flip it up, we've got uh, we've just started to do the. A little design here to make the comb just tie into the into the cheek piece which we'll get into later but we've got the these lobes uh, finished off nicely we've got a nice little curve in the top of, on both sides here which adds a little class to it 
it's quite a nice shape but you can see the how nice and thin through the wrist this is and I really think it's easier to build a rifle with moldings on it than it is without it gives you a chance to to really bring it down and get that nice and nice and smooth and uh, and round particularly round so that's going to be all for today we started this morning at 10 o'clock and it's uh, five minutes past four and we're done with that much we're going to get started again tomorrow morning